Hey everyone, Steve here back on the SoCal N-Scale Layout. Uh, it's time for another video update. It's been a few weeks since we did one. Uh, got some pretty good changes since last time. And uh, of course, hope everyone had a great Thanksgiving. Uh, we got some work done on the layout over the Thanksgiving holidays and been working on it since. So uh, stick around and uh, we'll show you guys what we've been up to. Thanks. Okay, in the last video update, we had the bench work for the Helix. Uh, pretty much done. We had at least the framing done. Uh, we went ahead and put on all the edges uh, Cleaned it up a little finished it off. I guess you could say uh, I haven't done any more of the bench work yet for the helix because as you can see I've kind of been using it as a workbench. Uh, it's been pretty great for cutting sub road bed uh, Putting cork road bed down on sections before installing them on the layout even uh, putting track on some of the sections before putting them on the layout so uh, it makes for a great little uh, tool bench kind of got everything I need right now in one spot and as you can see there's some of my cutting work down below a lot of the what's left of sub road bed I've been trying to uh, waste as little as possible a lot of those scraps uh, I reuse and, and you know little areas here and there where if I need to shim something or need a small piece we'll go ahead and reuse those so um, Right now, I just kind of have lumber staged here on, and other stuff staged on this lower part. Haven't really got too much done there as far as the lower and the upper. Uh, also on the lower level where the yard will eventually be, I, I haven't done anything yet on that because I've kind of been working on the upper level mostly. I want to kind of get the upper level um, finished, at least for the most part, where if I have to get to something that might be a little uh, harder to reach, Right now, I can actually like climb underneath the lower level and through. Um, hopefully, I won't have to do that in the future, but for some of those areas, I actually plan on leaving some access uh, spots if I need to. If it's something like over here, uh, would be underneath Sullivan's Curve that I won't be able to access in the back, then I'll actually leave like an access panel. But for the most part, everything else I should be able to, to get to. But it's just been nice being able to get in there from underneath if I need to right now. So uh, that's why I haven't really moved on too much on the bottom level yet. So but that's the bottom level. On to the top level. Okay, the top level, or upper level, I should say. Upper level of the layout starting to take shape up here. Uh, this is about where blue cut will be on my layout. Uh, this will be the curve uh, coming down from Cajon blue cut in this area and then again over here we'll uh, it'll hit Keenbrook before we actually turn and go down the helix uh, and then Devore will be at the bottom of the helix uh, so anyway uh, this is uh, making our way up Cajon started to lay cork road bed for the three mains coming down from Cajon to blue cut um, my plan is to put the that famous crossing there in the layout, Swarth, Swarthout Canyon Road, I believe is what it's called. Swarthout, if that's how you pronounce it. And here's kind of a look coming up from Blue Cut. Sorry for the motion. Uh, this is it. Uh, track level, so you can kind of see the, you can see kind of the grade. Uh, it's about a 1% to 2% grade. Uh, this right here. Um, sorry, I'm trying to do my fingers. This is about where I'm going to put this bridge right here. Uh, it's a pretty cool looking uh, feature of in Cajon. I want to see if I can incorporate it on the layout. So um, That's my plan is to kind of put it right about there. So uh, This is the triple main Cajon coming up and sorry I got a glue bottle in the way and then you've got the split that takes main one and main two up through Sullivan's curve and then main three takes the diverging route and comes back around or actually comes back and joins the layout now obviously this isn't the prototypical Sullivan's curve because I don't think I have enough room in my garage to do that if I really wanted to, but uh, 
it's it's I think when we get some scenery up and uh, it'll look actually pretty cool we'll have a couple trains disappearing and maybe slightly and then we'll have them coming back around uh, depending on how we do the scenery uh, as you can see I've also got the SP UP Highline back there uh, that is uh, comes to about where does it come to just past Cajon right now uh, that's none of the top plywood is or the sub road bed I should say is glued onto the risers yet that one I actually put the track on before I put it in place that's what I did with the uh, main main one and two alright so main one and two main three closest and UP Highline in the back. Uh, the two tracks you see underneath, that's actually, that is actually where main one and two are gonna disappear. Uh, so the 15 freeway, I'm gonna have like a mock freeway coming here and then uh, SP, UP Highline uh, will disappear behind the, the freeway. Uh, scenery and then main one and two will disappear behind it and then but they'll actually come down here and then uh, This will actually be hidden underneath the scenery and All main one and two are gonna do uh, Is a reversing loop down here under Sullivan's curve. They'll come back Come back up and then obviously they'll go back in the opposite direction whether if they were on main one when they came in they'll come out in main two vice versa if they were on main two they'll come out main one um upsp highline will also disappear behind our 15 scenery divider and then we'll actually come back around here come out on this side and it'll be technically main three um, now obviously in real life main three and the upsp highline don't connect Main one and two don't connect, but you know it's it's for a layout, and we do what we can with the space we're given. So, um, but I think once we actually get everything up and running and scenery dividers in place, um, it'll actually uh, we're running trains. I think it'll be it'll be pretty darn fun to be able to run long trains um, up the grades and down the grades. Uh, and then I've already just started mocking up in place the UPSP Highline back here. And again, that's not glued in place. Those risers actually have to cut in the back because you can kind of tell they're too high if you look at it from here. So, But that's just the far ones in the back. Um, and then I've also been doing the, the Gap Masters as I go. Um, first time trying them. Um, I haven't uh, cut them yet. And I haven't soldered them all in place yet and cut them. I've done started doing a few as I go back and uh, do some remaining feeders. But um, right now, all the wooden ties for the hidden track up through the concrete ties, everything you see right now is actually got feeders on it. And we actually can run a train on it, which I'll show you guys here in a moment. So, but... um got most of the feeders down and installed there most of them probably 99.9% .9 of them are just hanging uh, I've got one set I think actually hooked up to my temporary um, my old MRC system it's just temporary it's just for testing track as I put it in <coughs> excuse me testing feeders and things like that to make sure I've got good power um, and I've actually um, I've ran trains around this so far and it's like I said it's one set of feeders hooked up and I've had zero issues with power I haven't even had a light flicker on the, the layout so uh, I think the track uh, as far as connections and power to it is good once we have all the feeders connected then uh, we'll actually uh, we'll actually be doing a lot better so I'm also kind of taking my time on the track putting it down tra track and um, feeders and wiring and all that because you know I'm trying to do it for block detection as I go 
And then I'm also trying to do it for, uh, you know, signaling later on. And I've got actually a couple AR1s I'm waiting on in the mail. So, uh, waiting on a few other things in the mail. I've got some more concrete flex track uh, coming. I think it comes out pretty cool. Uh, I like the way it looks. Uh, obviously, it needs to be weathered. But uh, I've got a few ties I still need to put back in. But the concrete, um, I've got 18 more pieces of the six foot section. And uh, unfortunately, the stuff I have on order is back ordered uh, until microengineering fixes their mold. I called them last week to check on my order, and they said it's back ordered right now. So, um, probably what I'm going to do is for the most part is I'm going to continue laying track, I'll continue laying sub road bed. Um, all the way down to the, the helix but the, as far as track I'll probably only lay track for main one and two because those are the two that I have most of the concrete on already the concrete ties and I don't want to run out of concrete ties on main one and two uh, because if I if I start running concrete ties on the UP SP Highline and the main three I probably won't make it to the helix but right now, I think I have enough to where I could run it down to the helix and then just make maybe like a temporary return loop. So at least while I'm working on the layout, I can have a train running up and down the, the, the pass or at least through the uh, main one and two and returning back down. So, But uh, anyway, uh, that's really what I've got done so far. I, I know it's probably not a lot for some people, but it's been a lot for me because... You know, cutting bench work and all these little risers, having to uh, get in there and measure and remeasure and cut and all that stuff, it, it, it's time consuming. And I'm still not even done. I still have to go back and put more risers in here. And then, like some of these um, support pieces, um, <clears throat> some of them I've been cutting as I go, like these, and then gluing them in place. And then I put the risers um, as I go. So. But, uh, yeah, it's, it's coming along, I think. It's, uh, you know, this is a, again, about a, you're looking from the end of that, where that, uh, putty jar is down there, uh, to about here is 16 feet, and then from Sullivan's Curve down to the other loop at the end, it's another 16 feet, so pretty good size layout. And then when you consider that's double deck, and there's a helix in there. Uh, it's going to be pretty good when it's done. So, uh, anyway, that's all for now. I'll, I'll go ahead and give you guys, show you guys a little teaser of, uh, you know, I was running something on the layout just so you can see it's working. So, stick around and uh, <clears throat> thanks for watching. All right, everyone, as promised, here we go. So, this is BNSF. 727 coming down to Hone Pass, right, leaving Sullivan's Curve out of Main 2. And right about now, he would be passing under the 15 and into the hidden reversing loop that would put him on main one coming back up. And this is where I'm going to have to probably do one of my auto reversers. Just a short train. I've got a few auto racks on it. 
the double stack, the clearance, and then just a couple that with some weight. Uh, I put the auto racks on there to make sure the, the train can handle all the curves that I'm putting in. So far it's done fine. Uh, again, this won't, the track that it's currently on with the wooden ties, eventually when this is all scenic, scenery complete, you won't even see this uh, train right now. But it'll still be accessible from underneath if ever needed to get under there. I have made everything on this layout to where if I need to, I can get to it. In fact, there's my access. So I can actually climb up through there if I need to to get to the train in Sullivan's Curve or any of them. In. Uh, I probably will use a lot of the, I do have a lot of Code 55 with wooden ties and I probably will use a lot of that in different parts of the layout such as uh, the yard, maybe some of the sidings. There'll be some sporadic parts of the layout that will have code 55 too. I mean, Column Pass isn't 100% complete with concrete ties. I know there are some sections that currently have wooden ties. <clears throat> Not very much anymore, but um, there is still some. And then, of course, if microengineering doesn't make it again for whatever reason, or it takes forever, uh, this layout actually might have more than originally planned and then we'll just have to swap it out later on but hopefully we don't run into that situation all right so now as you can see the trains come back out through the reversing loop <coughs> and it's climbing back up uh, through on main one and come back through the other side of the 15 again this will be a scenery divider that'll it'll hide a lot of that stuff in my garage like that white cabinet my tools I'll have like a little scenery divider there but it'll be probably shaped like a freeway <coughs> maybe made like a freeway I have some cars on it things like that we'll simulate the 15 and the three four lines going underneath it Again, this is just one feeder connected right now to my power pack, and it's feeding everything, so I haven't cut gaps yet. Um, I have a couple places that are gapped because of joints, like uh, splices in the wood, where when I, if I ever take this apart in sections, uh, there's track, or there are gaps there, and I've kind of got those temporarily wired together to bypass the gaps. train it's going back into Sullivan's curve on main one about as far as we can go for now until we get some more track done so hopefully next layout update we'll already have track down here uh, main one and two uh, I've already got the switches <coughs> excuse me got a lot of switches for those and uh, we'll probably start putting those in here this week so Anyway, I uh, appreciate you guys following along. I know it's probably a little bit longer than most updates, but it's been a little while. So, um, All right, before we go, I would like to thank a couple people for helping me out along the way. Uh, first is William Arsenal. Bill, hey, appreciate all the help. Bill's actually called me a few times. We've chat, chatted on the phone, uh, FaceTime, uh, and he's helped me out along the way with the layout. He's given me a lot of tips and advice uh things that he's learned along the way and you know just uh things that i can that'll help me moving forward so 
appreciate all the help, Bill. And uh, uh, Bill's also got a great looking layout. Uh, and I'll put the link in the description. So be sure to go check it out. Uh, second one, Vinny over at uh, BNSF6951. Uh, Vinny, Vinny uh, does a live stream every Friday night. And when Vinny's doing his live stream, that's a lot of times my motivation to come out here and work on the layout. Um, so I uh, kill two birds with one stone, but uh, um, get some great entertainment while I'm working on my layout. And I've actually, I think I've been on uh, Vinny's live stream now for probably going on a month and a half, two months. I didn't have a chance to really catch him back in California, but uh, out here in Maryland, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time is perfect for me. So I'm out working on the layout, drinking a few beers while. Uh, listening to Vinny and uh, everyone chatted up. So, hey, thanks, Vinny. I appreciate all you do for the, the community. And, uh, you know, he's got some great builds. Uh, he does a lot of uh, live feeds on, you know, railroading uh, tips and uh, custom builds, things like that. He'll do a lot of stuff on, on, on air, you know. So uh, he does a lot of great stuff for the channel. So, uh, if you haven't uh, checked his stuff out, please go over and, and check him out and, uh, you know, show up for one of his live streams. It's, it's a pretty good time. So uh, thanks again, everyone. Good feedback is always welcome. Tips and comments along the way. And uh, please share, like it if you, if you like it. Uh, make sure you subscribe so you can keep getting updates on the layout. But uh, uh, I think you'll enjoy them as we keep moving forward. I know I am. All right, take care. Until next time.